Daniel Ricardo is well known for his entertaining post-race interviews and jocular paddock antics. I'm tripping major nutsack right now. But behind the smile, there is a steely determination. He's a savvy proponent of the art of driving, with all the skill, passion and commitment needed to make himself a major force in Formula One. His interest in motorsport grew from an early age, while watching his father drive cars at Wanneroo Raceway, a track where the young Daniel would learn his craft. He joined the Red Bull Junior team in 2008. Formula Renault 2.0 and British Formula 3 titles soon followed. In December 2009, he got his first taste of an F1 car at the Young Drivers Test in Jerez, setting the fastest time of all on the final day. He was signed as a test driver for Red Bull's sister team, Toro Rosso, for the 2011 season. But his competitive race debut came sooner than expected. After a disappointing start to their season, the struggling HRT team decided to replace Narain Karthikeyan and Red Bull saw it as an opportunity to give Ricardo his big break at the 2011 British Grand Prix. But it was a rude awakening. Tail enders in every practice session, HRT qualified 23rd and 24th, with the rookie Australian starting right at the back. At a rain-soaked Silverstone, the only time Ricardo had another car beside him was when he was being lapped. And the remainder of his debut season wasn't much better. Along with Lotus and Virgin, HRT failed to score a single point, with the Australian's best result 18th in India. But in uncompetitive machinery, Ricardo had done enough to prove he had the skills to step up. And he was confirmed as a Toro Rosso driver for 2012. Ricardo was reborn, finishing P9 in his first race for the team at his home Grand Prix in Melbourne with five further points finishes to come and only one DNF the whole season. Ricardo was reborn. 2013 saw him hone his consistency, and he outscored teammate Jean Eric Verne by seven points, convincing Red Bull boss Christian Horner he was the man to replace his retiring compatriot Mark Webber in the Milton Keynes based team. Ricardo was now in the big league partnering four-time and reigning world champion Sebastian Vettel at the dawn of the turbo hybrid era. In the 2014 Australian Grand Prix, he scored a dream podium on debut for Red Bull. It's all a bit of a blur right now, that's, that's really cool. <laughs> I think we could see a smile from here. Only to be disqualified after the race for a fuel flow irregularity but he wouldn't be denied his champagne moment, scoring back-to-back -back podiums in Spain and Monaco as his momentum grew. It seemed only a matter of time before he would stand on the top step, and he didn't have to wait long. And there goes Daniel Ricciardo on Sergio Perez, moves up in a second place. Here comes Daniel Ricciardo on Nico Rosberg. Ricciardo takes the lead. The team rush out to applaud him home. It's Daniel Ricciardo on the top step of the podium for the first time in Formula One. I got a flight out tonight, but uh, I don't know, I was very tempted to cancel that one. <laughs> He was victorious again after some serious moves at the Hungaro ring. Ricardo's got the inside line, and down the inside goes Daniel Ricardo. Did he have some confidence on that brake pedal? Incredible. <laughs> 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 no! Absolutely amazing. After victory in Hungary, he made it back-to-back -back wins with a fine drive in Belgium. Unbelievable drive. Unbelievable. He finished his breakthrough season third in the championship, an incredible 71 points ahead of his German teammate. Ricardo had established himself at the very top.
With Fettel Ferrari bound for 2015, Daniil Kvyat was elevated from Toro Rosso to fill the vacant seat. The new pairing got on well. The highlight of the year was a double podium in Hungary behind Fettel. But despite another magnificent second place in Singapore, points were harder to come by. And Ricardo finished 2015 a disappointing eighth overall. But 2016 was vintage Ricardo. In Monaco, he claimed his maiden pole with a superb lap. However, a pit stop tactical error by the team denied him an almost certain victory. I was caught in the box. I didn't make the call. I got called, so they should have been ready. This one hurts a lot more than any other. There were further podiums in Hungary, Germany, Belgium and Singapore, where his trademark shoey became a tradition. <laughs> I'm not drinking out of that, right? Yeah! But with a young Max Verstappen replacing Kvyat in the second Red Bull seat and winning on debut for the senior team, Ricardo had a serious challenger to contend with. At Sepang, he had to get his elbows out. And as they rise over the crest, it's wheel to wheel. Verstappen on the outside, Ricardo trying to hang on in there. Who's going to win this battle between the two Red Bulls? No team orders here. Ricardo with a nose ahead, going into the next right-hander, stays ahead of Max Verstappen. Brilliant racing. Daniel Ricardo sees the chequered flag and the win that he's been waiting for for over two years now. Ricardo was a winner again. And there would be more top three finishes in Austin and Mexico City, as the Australian matched his career best finish of third in the Drivers' Championship. Red Bull's pairing had all the makings of a world-beating duo, but their 2017 car, the RB13, was unreliable, and Ricardo's DNFs mounted up. He fared best with a run of five podiums on the bounce, including victory in the inaugural Azerbaijan Grand Prix, where he gave a masterclass in the art of street circuit overtaking. And down the inside goes Daniel Ricardo. What a move from the Australian. The chequered flag is there. He wins the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. But three retirements in the final four races saw Ricardo's 2017 challenge peter out, and the frustrated Australian finished fifth in the championship, albeit 32 points ahead of Verstappen. Twenty eighteen would mark another turning point in Daniel's F1 career. Fourth in the season opener, he really came alive in round three. Bottas covers Go. it off, but he can't cover it off totally. Ricardo somehow finds a gap there. Come on. Get it, Kill. Get it. Woo. He has made every single opportunity that's come his way today. Ricardo wins the Chinese Grand Prix. <laughs> <laughs> yes, boys. That is Holy. Jolly. Amazing job, mate. That was absolutely clinical, clinical moves. Sometimes you just got to lick the stamp and send it. So uh, <laughs> there we go. I, I enjoyed it very much. In Monaco, there was redemption for his 2016 disappointment. Quickest in every session, he led the race from pole, despite an MG UK problem that saw him unable to find seventh and eighth gears for more than half the race. Yeah, I got no power though. Will it get better? Negative, Daniel. Negative. His eventual victory in Monte Carlo would be his greatest performance to date. It's redemption day for Daniel Ricciardo. He wins the Monaco Grand Prix. Amazing. I don't know how you did that, Daniel. Incredible. There was a few doubts that came in mid-race, but uh, yeah, just we won Monaco, so <laughs> feels good. Feels good. But Monaco would also prove to be his last win as a Red Bull driver, with Ricardo surprising the paddock by announcing a move to Renault for 2019, parting ways with the company that had backed him for so long.
Partnering Nico Hülkenberg, the move to the French team was seen as a sideways step at best, with Renault at that time rarely in contention for podium places. And Ricardo's campaign didn't start well. The team's best finish came at Monza, with Ricardo P4 and Hülkenberg P5. We'll keep chipping away. Pizza is paying off, mate. Pizza, pizza, pizza. <laughs> With the Australians' help, Renault finished fifth in the Constructors' Championship, a marked improvement from ninth the year before. But it wasn't the success he craved. When the 2020 Championship was delayed by the coronavirus pandemic, driver transfer talks started early. Sebastian Vettel announced he would be leaving Ferrari at the end of the year, instigating a summer shuffle that saw Carlos Sainz take the German's vacant seat at Maranello, and Ricardo opting to move to McLaren in 2021. But there was still the condensed 2020 season to contend with. Ricardo finished fourth at Silverstone in the British Grand Prix, and then P4 again at Spa and Mugello. A first Renault podium since 2011, agonizingly just out of reach. The tension was finally broken at the Nürburgring. Daniel Ricardo gives Renault their first podium since Malaysia in 2011. Is that a podium, boys? Yeah. Is that a podium? That's a podium. Yeah, nice job, mate. Podium, Daniel. Thank you. <laughs> awesome job, mate. Oh. <laughs> Finally. Assistance pays off. Ricardo claimed another podium at Imola, finishing the year fifth in the driver's standings. The remarkable progress meaning he left the French team on a high. With a reinvigorated McLaren finishing third in the Constructors' Championship, it seems Daniel's move was well-timed. The ascending Woking outfit look poised to push on, with Ricardo alongside the always improving Lando Norris as F1's new era approaches, with big regulation changes coming in 2022. More victories, more celebrations, more moments of Danielness. Whatever the future holds for the Honey Badger, he'll be desperate to have a car to finally match his talents. One of the most likeable drivers on the grid, he remains a champion in waiting.